All right. Uh, today's uh, lecture is on the factor of safety, uh, which is where we start to see why stress matters. So measurements of stress are used to ensure safe designs. That's why we want to know what the stress in a material is. Uh, and nobody, nobody likes failure. So the first step uh, in understanding that safe design is to understand how much stress your material can withstand. And so materials, whether concrete or steel or wood, whatever uh, material you're using, are often tested until failure. Okay, we add larger and larger shear stress or larger and larger tensile or compressive stresses uh, until um, an object fails. And that has different definitions in different situations. Uh, but we can kind of think now just about failure. Either it starts to bend or in a significant way or it cracks or uh, failure can mean different things. But there is some kind of failure that we'll design uh, in a given situation. Okay, and we'll call that uh, the failure stress. And that is a material property. That's something we can know when we're using a particular kind of steel or a particular kind of concrete, what that uh, failure stress is going to be. Now, we could just maximize our design uh, so that it reached its maximum stress right at the failure stress, right? Um, but there's a danger in that, in that sometimes we underestimate a load uh, that, say, this crane might uh, undergo, uh, or maybe we have a piece of steel that has a weakness in it, right? Uh, and it's a little bit weaker than uh, what we think of as the standard uh, uh, stress, has a, a, a smaller stress failure than we thought it would. And so we design in a factor of safety. That is, we want to create a design that's not going to really come very close to that failure stress uh, because failure is a big deal. It's a big problem. Um, and so we are willing to spend a little bit more, which is what designing, you know, designing with bigger beams costs more. Uh, and so we're willing to uh, pay a little bit more uh, to make sure that we avoid any kind of failure. And that factor of safety is defined right here. So a factor of safety is going to be your failure stress over your allowable stress. So this guy down here is always going to be smaller than this one uh, by some factor. Now that FS uh, is different in different situations, right? Um, if, for instance, let's say we uh, are designing for space flight, right, where uh, weight really, really matters um, and expenses are huge, um, and we're only building one thing and we can carefully inspect our, uh, our material to make sure there's no problems, we might have a factor of safety that's pretty close to one, um, where we're really pushing the limits of our materials. Uh, if we're building, you know, a crane or something, you know, that um, adding more material isn't going to necessarily be a huge problem and we really uh, we really have, we can invest a little bit to avoid uh, um, a failure, then our factor of safety might be higher than that. It might be close to two or three. So let's consider uh, an example. So here's the foot of a crane. Uh, and we want to know how large this base has to be to ensure that it doesn't buckle the concrete underneath it, right? We know that whatever load is applied here, if we can spread that out over a larger area, our stress is going to be smaller, right? So if we increase the size of our footing here, uh, we're going to decrease the stress for a given load uh, and hopefully uh, save that concrete from uh, cracking. So let's say that our uh, Failure stress here, which would be a compressive failure stress, is 2.8 KSI, which is uh, kilopounds per square inch. So that's a British measurement. Um, so 1,000 pounds per square inch. We set a factor of safety of 2. Uh, and we know that um, the load here is going to be about 100,000 pounds of force. So we find our allowable stress. Our allowable stress is always going to be smaller 
than our failure stress, right? So here we rearrange our equation here to find our allowable stress, and we find that our allowable stress is half of our failure stress. Okay, so 1.4. So we're going to design so that the maximum stress ever experienced by this concrete is 1.4 uh, KSI. Okay, so that's our idea here. Now let's... All right, so now let's go ahead and solve the design problem, which is to find the area of the footing necessary to keep our uh, compressive stress there below our safety level. So we take our average shear stress, or I'm sorry, average normal stress equation, and we want to find A, because now we know this, Right? We know the max that, that is allowable, um, and we know that this is 100,000 uh, uh, pounds of force, and so we're going to solve this for A. We have 100,000 pounds force here, and a KSI is uh, kilopounds per inches squared, so those kilopounds are going to cancel out here. Uh, and we find that we can do a uh, footing of 72 uh, inches squared. Now remember, that's a uh, minimum size. We could make a bigger footing and our uh, average uh, stress would be lower uh, and we'd be fine. But if we want to make sure that it's at least as big uh, as that.